Just clap for our freedom. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, welcome, Bridge Community Church. This next song, Who You Say I Am, let's just proclaim that. It's our promise in the Lord.
say I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. Amen. Good morning, church. How many of you love that statement that you are for me, not against me? I mean, I don't know about you, but that outnumbers just about everything else in the world, doesn't it? I mean, thank goodness that God is for us. I love that. Um, well, I have a couple of announcements to make. I am filling in for Pastor Andy, who is spending time with his lovely bride and new baby. So well needed and enjoyed. So we hope they are recovering well and doing well. It's exciting. And uh, first announcement I have this morning is for Financial Peace University. We're going to be hosting that here starting on January 23rd. It's going to be nine consecutive Wednesday evenings starting about 6 p.m. The cost of it is about $109. Now, we got a discount to get it that low. So if you sign up through the church website, you will go ahead and be given the discount for the, for the classes. So we want to encourage you to do that. It's a fantastic um, uh, if you've never been through it, it's a fantastic program to go ahead and go through. Helps make sure you're spending your money wisely, being good stewards. And it's just, uh, I think it's good to have. So encourage you to be involved in that if you haven't seen or been a part of that before. The second announcement I have, I get to invite up the wonderfully talented and a good friend of mine, Sarah Jackson, is going to come up. Does she know that or not? She looked at me like she didn't know she was coming. Sarah Jackson is coming up. She is going to share something that's going on coming up for the women called Create. So, here you go. Right. Thank you. Oh, he gave me script to read. That's good. So, <laughs> no. uh, I'm really excited to have an opportunity this morning to tell you all a little bit more about this event. I know there have been some questions, so hopefully those will be answered this morning. First of all, let me tell you who this event is for. If you are an extremely creative person, if you have a lot of experience painting and drawing or in any other form of art, this event is definitely for you. If, on the other hand, you are that person that I've heard say, I am so unartistic, I do not have a creative bone in my body, this is definitely for you. So what I'm saying is, it's for everyone. This will be a level playing field. You can come and not have to worry about your work being compared to anyone else's, or the, you, know, you won't get a grade. You don't even have to show your work to anybody else if you don't want to. This is for you to enjoy. So I want to tell you a little bit about what we're going to do. I'm going to give several demonstrations on some different techniques. One will be watercolor, one on lettering, one on a very simple method of collage, and then I'll give you an idea for how you might incorporate that into a page for a journal. And you are free to do that following my instructions and my idea, or you can take that and run with it and you just use that as a springboard for something you want to do that's different. 
Um, our vision for this event is that women would come. I know there's some teenage girls coming also, which I think is exciting. We want to fellowship. We want to have a lot of fun. And I want to, I, my hope is that you will leave with some tools and some ideas that will help you create a space for something to happen between you and God that wouldn't happen otherwise. I'm a strong believer in the connection of the body and the brain and the heart, and I think when you get all those things engaged, something really wonderful can happen. Um, what you need to bring is nothing. You will get all of your supplies there. You'll be able to take a journal home with you and several other things. And all I'm asking you to bring is a sense of adventure and a willingness to try something new. So this event happens two weeks from last night. We'd like you to sign up as soon as possible if you're interested. Space is limited, and we want to make sure that we have all the materials and everything that you will need while you're there. My sister, Jane, is coming from Texas, and she told me that I should tell you that people are flying in from across the country for this event. <laughs> so... You want to get in while you can. As I said, space is limited, so you can sign up in the lobby after church, or if you forget to do that, you can sign up online. And I'll be available after church out there by the uh, welcome table if you have any other questions. So come and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. All right. I'm glad it's a women's event because I'm one of those with no artistic ability at all. Anyway, it says, the ushers do prepare to receive the offering. Um, you know, it's exciting to be in the house of God together, isn't it? Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to look at the sky at all yesterday, but was it just the most amazing thing in the world? And after hearing Sarah talk about creativity and art, you know, when you look at who God is, he is creative. I mean, what he did yesterday in the sky and the clouds and the rainbow, if you didn't see it, and the mountains and the snow, I mean, God is about that. And I think when you use your gifts whatever that might be, art related or just singing related or instrument related, whatever it might be, when you use your gifts, God is glorified. Amen? And so whatever that gift is, I just want to encourage you this morning to use that for the glory of God. Let's pray. Father, we come together this morning to you. And Lord, we lay our hearts bare before you. Father, we ask for just a, an overwhelming sense of your goodness in our lives. We ask for you to just touch us, Father, to move supernaturally in each one of us. God, we thank you for what you've done in our lives. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for the gifts and the talents that you've given us. And Lord, this morning we ask that you would bless the gifts that we give to you, that Lord, you would use it to further your kingdom. And Father, we ask that you would bless the worship team and Pastor Andy, or Pastor Danny, as the word comes forth. Father, we thank you for what you've done here, what you're going to continue to do at Bridge. We give you all the praise and glory in your son's precious name. Amen. Amen. So 
so make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be.
As we're worshiping the Lord, the, the song says that um, we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. It's a, a reference to a, a verse in, in Revelation. And one of the things I'm learning about God is that I know very little about God. One of the things that as I dive deeper into who He is, the more that I realize there's more to know. Would you agree with me about our God that for the rest of our lives, He's eternal. And so we're going to spend our lives diving into His character and His nature. And what I know about Jesus is that Jesus is God. And what I know about God is that He loves His children and that, that Jesus is on a mission to restore all things. And sometimes we get to see heaven come down to earth and it's awesome, right? There are times when we get to see God do what only God can do in a situation where it's just like, okay, that was God. How many of you would raise your hand and say, yes, I've experienced that? And don't you wish we could experience that all the time? Well, you will. You will one day. A great day. There'll be a great day when he comes back to redeem and restore all things. And in the middle of, of our waiting between that day and this day, we have what we call tension, right? And I know I can ask you to raise your hand and say if you've ever felt tension to raise your hand. Like the tension between heaven and earth. God's grace is there for every bit of that tension. Every time he doesn't do what we want him to do. Every time he doesn't answer the prayer the way we want it answered. Every time that the miracle doesn't happen like it was supposed to happen. He's there with his grace. 
But the testimony is what reminds us of who he is, that he continues to restore and redeem all things, and that heaven does touch earth. Heaven does come down and heal and restore and do miracles. And, uh, and I wanted to invite uh, Larry Lester to come forward because he has a testimony. So if you would, would have a seat uh, just for a moment and just stay in an attitude of worship because we're going to keep worshiping Jesus. But I wanted to give Larry a chance to tell his story. I hope I can get through it. I'm with you. <clears throat> yeah, that helps. <laughs> um, a year and a half ago, I was uh, told that I have a very rare cancer. In fact, it was so rare up until about two months before I got it, there was no treatment. But uh, well, I did get the treatment. And uh, it did disappear from my body. It wasn't there while I was under treatment. So about November of this year, I went in for you know, PET scans every couple of months, so I went in for a PET scan, and um, the cancer had come back, and that was mid-November. Um, then they wanted, you know, I, I wanted a biopsy. I wanted to make sure there wasn't a short in the PET scan or something, you know, <laughs> some, some other reason. But they took a biopsy. It was the cancer. It's called uh, Merkel cell, and it had come back. And they had no treatment. In fact, in their knowledge, there was nobody that ever had it and got treatment and went, went away. Once it came back, there was no, no other treatment that would work. So they gave me six months to a year. And uh, that reality certainly has a tendency to draw you closer to God very quickly. I was amazed that my Christian walk improved so well <laughs> and so fast. <laughs> Anyway, um, we went to, we, we thought we'd get a second opinion and went to uh, City of Hope. And we found a doctor there that specialized in this type of cancer. So she went through the whole thing with me and uh, uh, she was big on this new, there was a new drug that just got released, I think the 28th of December uh, for this type of cancer. It's an immunotherapy type treatment. Very little side effects. So. Uh, we, she said she'd call my oncologist. So she called my oncologist, and within 24 hours, I mean, I don't know what she said to this guy, but he was singing a different tune when he called me. So he was totally on board with everything she said. And the treatment was going to be a laser, a radiation laser to the tumor, followed up with a, this new immunotherapy. So Wednesday, the day went, I checked in, um, let's see, I checked in in the morning for something, I forget. Um, anyway, make a long story short, I, I got another PET scan on Wednesday, okay, this week. And then I, I met, oh, radiology. I had to go to radiology. They explained to me what they were going to do. The PET scan that I was going to get would mark where the cancer was and if it spread and what they needed to know how to treat it. So I came, I came back on Thursday for my first immuno treatment of this new stuff. Thursday afternoon, the, the oncologist called and said, we have this new PET scan and we can't explain it, but you have no cancer. Okay. <laughs> I said, let me help you explain it. <laughs> this is a miracle. And he said, it, that, this fits. He said, uh, you must have had a lot of people praying for me. Yeah. And I thank all of you who have prayed. I have one request. My son-in-law just got in a terrible motorcycle accident. Mm. He's in the hospital. He has a broken pelvis. They're trying to get him changed to a larger hospital. His name is Rick Cucci. Please keep him in prayer. I'd sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, step boy, step. Thank you for that. Can I ask you to just um, stand in honor of Jesus? If you're able to do it, do it. If, if you're not able to, that's okay. But if you can. You know what? What Larry just shared, the, the reality of, of healing and the miracle, 
and then the the reality of of an accident and, and a greater need. This is the tension. And God's grace is sufficient in the tension. And it doesn't it doesn't stop us from continuing to ask and to seek and to knock and believe that God can do whatever he wants to do and whatever needs to be done. And so if you would come to the Lord in just a place to surrender, whether it's over your life, over situations that A, you just need more of his grace to, and to walk through where, where he has you, or, or B, you just need him to come and rescue and change the circumstance to do something that only God can do. Whatever, wherever you find yourself, I'd invite you to come just real open-handed before God and let God be God. Let Jesus the healer do what only he can do. Let his kingdom come into your life. And, and as you do that, I'm going to just pray. And I'd love if you would agree with me too over Rick that, that God would do a miracle in Rick's life right in this moment. Jesus, we stand before your holiness, before the throne of grace, where we're instructed that we get to come boldly. We're reminded that we're allowed to call you Father. And that really isn't like father in the formal. That's like daddy in the informal. And we come to you, daddy, and we ask you for grace over every situation, with every hand that's lifted, with every need that's in every life that's here represented in this room and beyond this room. Would you come the way that only you can come? Would you come like a flood into situations and bring your grace and bring your healing and bring your hope? God, I thank you for what you've done in Larry's life. I thank you, Jesus. We worship you and we honor you. Only you could do that, God. And you did it, and we thank you. And now that same God who healed Larry, I pray that you would come and visit Rick and give him peace and bring healing to his body and, and get him where he needs to get, Lord. Cause situation, circumstance, Lord. Um, whatever needs to happen, Lord, we pray that it would happen so that he might get the best care possible. And Lord, that you would do a massive miracle. We need you, God. With your hands lifted and, and, and just on your feet, to God, would you just come to Jesus with, with your joy, with your excitement, with your, your, your love for him? And would you also come to him with your need and with your worry and with your concern? And would you cast everything on him because he cares for you? We're going to sing that song that we sing again. We, we've overcome by the, word of the, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Let's just offer it all up to Jesus. Let him be who he is. He reigns eternal forever and ever and ever. Amen. God. Amen. Amen. And I want to ask you to do one more thing before you have a seat this morning. I want you to place your hand on the, just the shoulder of the person that's next to you. And, and you're ministers of the Lord. You follow Jesus. You're a minister of the Lord. 
And I just want to ask you to pray blessing over that person that's on your right and on your left. Just that God would fill them. God would touch them. God would minister to them. You don't even have to ask them what to pray. Just bless them. You have been given the authority to do that as followers of Christ. And just bless them. Thank you, Jesus, that we are blessed by you. God, we thank you that we're not blessed just to simply enjoy it, although we do. But we're blessed to be a blessing. God, I thank you that we are filled with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we're not just filled with your Spirit to get the goosebumps, although we get them and we love them. But we're filled to spill, God, to spill the reality of your Holy Spirit to a world that needs it, God to our brothers and sisters on our right and left, to our, our friends at the grocery store, Lord, to the person who works next to us in the cubicle or office next to ours, to our neighbors. God, we thank you that this means something, Lord, that our, our relationship with you is transformational first to us and then to others. And may it be so. God, bless your people today. God, bless them. Fill them afresh and anew with your Holy Spirit, with your life. And we pray it in the powerful name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Amen.